Right, after some technical difficulties, we are live. This is cool, we're fine. We should be fine. Well, saying that, I did have to turn my speakers down a little bit, so the, uh, the um, what am I trying to say, the audio might not be as loud, so I might have to turn my speakers back up in a minute. Um, yeah, it was weird what happened a second ago. Ooh, there we go, yeah. It was weird what happened a second ago. Basically, I randomly... It, I don't even know how I did this. I don't know how I do these things, but um, I was in the Google Hangout twice. So basically, there was an echo, and I was... Um, it was like I was sort of chatting to myself, because, you know, when you go into a Google Hangout or, or when you watch a Google Hangout on YouTube, and then you have, like, two people in the Hangout or three people in the Hangout, and then you get that little row of... Uh, that those little squares at the bottom well it was like that and i was having a conversation to myself on echo it was yeah really weird is the sound okay with the microphone there rather than uh the microphone right at me because i actually need my hands free so if the sounds okay please just you know put it in the chat um, and i'll just leave the microphone there if it's too low or if it's too loud i can change the volume on the on the mic so that's fine um Oh, well, hey, I got notified. Thanks for those that helped yesterday. Oh, did you get that sorted? I haven't a clue. I, I don't really, um, I mean, I, I do watch things live, but I don't really um, have a problem with the notifications or anything. You know, they just pop up and then I just click through. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, sound is fine. That's great. So I'll just leave it there. That's cool. So as you can probably tell by the title, uh, I put in the title Diecast Day. Um, I, since I've started doing auctions, I feel like the niches that I gravitate towards, uh, you know, a big one is diecast. There's a few others that I gravitate towards, but a big one is diecast. So yeah, I kind of spent about 150 quid on diecast, uh, this time at the auction, which is like six or seven boxes worth. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to sit here for five hours, well, sorry, stand here for five hours uh, going through every individual die-cast car because, or, you know, lorry or van or whatever. It just, it, it would take far too long. So I bought, basically, I bought a few boxes in. I'm going to hold them up to just show you the box and show you how much quantity of the, these die-casts I've got. And then what I've done is earlier on today, I, I was going through to pick some out to list. So what I did was I thought, right, I will uh, pick, I'll go through the six boxes and pick a few bits and bobs out. Some interesting ones, you know, some val uh, slightly more valuable ones, some, uh, you know, just some cool ones, really. Unfortunately, there's not really any, like, mega valuable ones that I've found so far. I did only do, like, a, a little routine check. Um, but... See, you know, the ones I've researched and stuff, I've not researched all of them, but the ones I've researched, there's not any mega valuable ones, but there's certainly still some cool ones. Um, at last, Ad's showing us his bits. Yeah, I'm showing you my bits now. Um, oh, and I've just seen something. I've seen another one of these, so I'm going to put that in the, the pile over there. Watch this one here. Oh, that's the 2001 one. Um, but no, yeah, I've just seen that. So... Also, what came? Uh, what what I'll do is before we get onto the diecast. Actually, I, I think the best thing to do is do things separate to the diecast. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll we'll get into it, but we'll do things separate to the diecast first. So uh, do, 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 I've got this atmosphere, uh, the gatekeeper board game, fairly standard bread and butter pickup. However, it is all new and sealed inside, so that is really cool. I'll just get get a couple of bits out to show you. Um, don't know whether you're going to see these in much detail, but as you can see, this is sealed, those are sealed, the cards, everything, all the contents are sealed. So, yeah, really happy with that one. Um, I don't know what these are going for on Amazon at the moment. I did... I did think um, about sending it up to Amazon. I might get a bit more with the sealed contents up there. But I think on eBay with sealed contents, it's around the 20, maybe 25 pound. Um, paid two pound for that in a charity shop yesterday uh, when I was picking up my auction purchases. I have a whip around the charity shops as well because it's just you know worth my time to do that while I'm there. 
picking up my auction stuff. So, yeah, that was that one. Um, I also, I didn't really get any other lots this time or many other lots that were other, you know, other than die cast. So I did get one. I did get this, which was pretty cool. Um, uh, you know, I got one that I really wanted to show you. I paid ten pound plus commission, and it's not just this. There's another couple of paintings as well. I've never done paintings or anything like that, but I like them. You know, I've got that one behind me there, and I've got a few up there. Sorry, I, th I think there's a little bit of an echo. One sec. One sec. Right, let's see that. I hope I'm not muted you there. I'll muted myself there, but I think that might relieve the echo. Um, so yeah, anyway, I just randomly had a bit of an echo then. Um, so yeah, I like paintings and things like that. Um, you know, it's, it's something that um, I've always liked, sort of, I wouldn't say collecting, but just having around me, I like having paintings on the wall and stuff. Um, and in particular, I like watercolours. Um, I do like oil on canvases and things like that, but I like watercolours. So uh, these were free watercolours. No one was interested in them. The, the lowest this auction house goes is 10 quid. They don't go any below 10 quid. Um, so I thought, right, I know that the auctioneer isn't going to go any lower than 10 quid. I'll take a chance on it with that. So it's got this nice frame on it. Um, and it's this sort of, um, you know, sailing picture. You know, it's like a, what do we call it? Is it? maritime is that what we call is that the genre or something i don't know um but it is signed to the bottom i can't make it out it doesn't say anything on the um you know the auction catalog who, who it was signed by um but that was nice and i thought i've got three paintings and i thought basically including commission it's less than four quid each so or it's around four quid each so i thought you know what I'm, i've got to take them for that i've got to take them take a chance on it now Things like this in like antique centres, you'd probably be able to get like 10, 20 quid, something like that. So I knew I was safe even in that, you know, in terms of if I ever get a booth at an antique centre, I can just whack them in there, you know, keep them in the house for a few months and then just whack them in there. But um, I thought, yeah, there's got to be some money in these. Um, and then there's two which are, um, one second, that is coming off at the back there, which is not a good sign, but I don't know, I don't know how I can get that back on, but. It's not a good sign there. But um, I got this one. This is R. R. Makufi. R. Makufi or something. Um, and again, it's a watercolour. A nice frame. It's actually the same kind of frame as the ones I've got up there, which were a bit smaller. The ones I've got up there are almost antique now. I think they're 1923, so not far off becoming antique. Um, yeah, so this is, I do know the name of this guy. It's R. Makufi. Um, or however you pronounce it, I can't quite pronounce it, but it, it's nice. Um, and again, it's a watercolor. I mean, I don't really know what else to say because I don't really know what I'm going to get back for it. But there's got to be something in me. There's got to be. I just can't. I just can't imagine there not being any money in this. You know, like I imagine if I find the right person, there's going to be some profit in it for me. So yeah, um, that that one. And then this one, which is nice, and the back is okay on that one, which is good. Um, and that's, again, from the same artist, Arma Kufi, or however you pronounce it. Um, and, yeah, that's I just quite like it. I quite, I mean, I'm tempted just to put it up, you know, put one of them up there and replace those two. Um, but I don't know. I got those two for really cheap off eBay, actually, ages ago. Um, but, yeah, that, I like that one. I like that one. Um, are the paperbacks on paintings always ripped because people have been looking for stashed? Oh, why right, is it? Oh, why were you asking that? Oh, I thought you were stating that. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe that's the reason because people are looking for cash in the back of the paintings. I don't know. I haven't a clue. Someone could answer you in the chat probably. I don't know. Um, oh, God, the chat's pretty buzzing. I'll just check... Uh, how many people we've got watching? Oh, we've got 20 people watching already. Wow. Um, we've got Gary in there. We've got Adam in there. We've got Daniel in there. We've got all the regulars in there, really. Um, so that was those two other than diecast. So here are a few, a few boxes of the diecast. So I put these to one side. We've got this one here, which I can't even tip to the side because, well, it'd all tip out. But you can kind of gauge there's a fair bit of stuff in that one. 
And this is only half of them. There's another like three boxes in the other room. Then we've got this one that doesn't look so appealing and doesn't look like this, you know. A lot of it seems to be, eh, you know, some of the wheels are off and stuff like that. And there's bits and bobs in there. There's obviously bits and bobs in there that are salvageable and saleable on their own individually. Um, but some of it might just get job lotted or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, so there's that one. And then there's this little box here, which is intriguing. Um, which actually had which actually had these in as well. So I'll show you these first. Um, right, what have we got there? Uh, do, do, do. I'm just going up the chat again. Can someone just let me know if you can see what I'm posting in the chat, please, Lisa says. Uh, yeah, I can see it. Well, well, I just read it out. There you go, so I can see it. Um, or have have I been watching too much story and what the storage was? Maybe. I mean, I, I can't I can't see like every painting or most paintings being whipped at the back to uh, see if there's cash in there. But maybe the more I don't know because then you I was thinking maybe the more ornate ones you'd actually you know slash at the back to see if there's cash in. But then again. If it's an ornate painting, you wouldn't do that, would you? So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, so these were in one of the job lots. Anyway, one of the die cast job lots. So the scale X trick, scale X trick. Can never pronounce that. You know what it is. Uh, it's a 2012 out, um, edition 53, like a magazine or an annual or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. And it's got all like, you know, accessories and track diagrams and all that sort of stuff in there. Um, I've got that listed for six quid. There was another one on for around that, that price, so I thought I'd just go similar price. Um, so, yeah, that was nice and quick and easy to list anyway. I do like listing magazines and stuff like that. Um, Airfix 2012 annual. I don't know how much that's worth, but there's got to be some money in it. Maybe only a little bit of money, but some money in it. Um, so that was that one. And then this one was quite cool. This is a Tamiya or Tamiya or however you want to pronounce it. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, and it's a catalogue uh, for 2014. One of these is sold for a tenner. So I thought, yeah, that can go on its own. You know, I'll just whack that on for a tenner. Um, so that's that. And I've actually got now. Now, I don't know whether this is going to fit in one. But what I've got now is, um, you know, those like cardboard. Oh, I want to try. I'm trying to say what they're called i don't know what they're called but they're like um card backed envelope type things they're like the do not bend ones or something i don't know but i've got some of them anyway now so i don't know i don't think that'll fit in it though because it's too width ways it, it you know it, it, i don't think it's going to fit in but anyway they're quite good for magazines and stuff that like those kind of things so i'm glad i've actually got some of them now but that one yeah so hopefully get 10 quid for that um, one has sold for that, so I don't see why I wouldn't, but it might have been in slightly better condition, so yeah, I don't know. And then I've got these random things, I don't know what they are, F FMR transfers, don't know, something to do with model trains, anyway, something to do with model trains. Um, and then we've got just a load more magazines and stuff in here, I'm not going to go through these all individually. It's just going to take too much time, way off there. Um, and then we've got a random creative photography book. I don't know. Might be some money in it. And then we've got um, some... I think these might do okay as a little job lot. I mean, not a load of money, obviously, but just a little bit of money. Um, we've got Corgi. Like, I think these are magazines or something. Um, and this is January slash June 2014. So I imagine these are... Um, a bi-yearly magazine, so every six months. Um, we've got we've got here 2013 January to June, 2013 July to September, 2012 April to June. Well, that's not bi-yearly. Uh, July to September 2012, 2014 July to December. So, yeah, I might just job lock them up. I don't know, 15 quid, something like that. I really haven't a clue. I'm just guessing. Um but, you know, you get to a point where in your reselling where you can kind of, it's weird on some, I mean, I'm not good at this on everything. And I don't think there's many people out there who could do this on everything. But you get to a point where you can just like guess the price and you'll, it, it, it's like sort of, uh, you know, when we do it on the tap chat, like uh, 
price is right. You can get to a point, if it's something that you've dealt with a bit before, but you've not dealt with that exact item, but you have dealt with that niche, um, you can kind of guess the price and it's kind of accurate. So I don't know. I'm just guessing at that, but there might be some more money in it and that might be some less. I don't know. Um, but I mean, magazine bundles and stuff in the past that I've sold, I generally, you know, 10 to 20 quid, that sort of range, unless there's anything special. Um, but yeah, so that was that. So now I'm going to show you the ones that I picked out. And I had a little, oh, there it is. So now I'm going to show you the ones that I actually picked out. I've got a few prices wrote down because I know that, I, you know, sometimes when I come on here, I don't have prices to hand them. And I'm just saying, well, oh, I got this and I don't know what it goes for. And oh, I got this and I don't know what it goes for. So I want to try and get back into more, you know, actually sh t showing you and telling you prices. Um, so I wrote down some of the prices as well. Unfortunately, there are a few that I just don't know. But, you know, but I don't think going to be anything major, major. Um, but yeah, m a lot of them I do know. So that's good. Um, where are we? Oh, wait. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, do, 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 do. <whistles> Something was in the chat. One second. What was that? Hang on a minute. Um, yeah, Lisa, I hope your daughter is storming. Man. It was something about Lisa's daughter in there. I don't know. I was just interested to hear about that. Oh, she just says, cheers, Pete. All right, okay. Um, the stream keeps dropping out for me. Uh, yes, Bethan. Is that Bethan? Is that how you pronounce that? Is doing really well, thank you. Oh, that's good to hear, Lisa. Um, yeah, so uh, Fort Diecast needed to be in mint condition to make money. No, 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 no. You can make, like, I had... Um, I had that chitty chitty bang bang and that chitty, I always I always laugh when I say that because it's quite funny. But I had that chitty chitty bang bang one and that was in rough condition. It was uh, I think two of the kids were missing out the back, but it was beat up. The, the wing one of the wings wouldn't come out properly and all that. And I got about sixteen quid just for that little model. So you know even really worn die cast you can uh, you can make some money on. I, I will agree with you in the fact that. A lot of the uh, Lido, or in fact, that, that's how you pronounce it, Lido, Lado, or however you pronounce it, uh, Matchbox, some Lesney ones, um, what are the other ones, like uh, Masuto, or however you pronounce that. A lot of those ones that are really heavily worn and that have been really mass-produced, yes, okay, there's hardly any money in them. But there are certain ones, you know, Corgi, Dinky, a lot of the dinky ones, even if they're play worn, uh, you know, can be good money, you know. And, and sometimes, sometimes the bigger the size of the vehicle, they can be worth more money. Not always, but sometimes that's what I've found as well. Um, but I'm still relatively new to doing diecast, so I don't know. I, I'm just learning, you know, what's what. Um, but anyway, I'll go through a few of them with you now. Um, so we've got, I've got three of these... Um, what were these? This is the uh, Spectrum Pursuit Vehicle, Vivid Imaginations Limited. So it's that one there. And I've got three of these. So there's one there, one there, and then another one there. So I've got three of those. Um, and they seem to go quite steadily for around the £10 plus postage. So that's pretty good. There's some good money there. Now, there is another one that I just showed you, but that one is more plasticky. And it's from a later date. This is 2001. The other ones are 1993. So, yeah, I don't know about that one. I don't know how much money's in that one. Um, yeah, but the, these aren't in terrible condition anyway. The seems to be most of the stuff is on them anyway, of what I can see. So, yeah, of what I can see. I mean, I would imagine that those things on the back there would be missing. You know, those little antennae bits might might come loose or might break off, but they seem to be there anyway. And then you press that little thing and then a door comes out. See that? That's pretty cool. I like that. Boom. Oh, and then that front bit comes up as well. That's cool. So, yeah, I've got those. Um, what other else have I got? Oh, I've got this one. This one's nice. This is... Um, Tim Timpo, 
yeah, Timpo Toys. And I thought, oh, that could be worth something because, um, well, because I've not heard of it. That's that's the reason why I thought it'd be worth something. Um, one second, let me just go down in the chat. Oh, no, it's gone. It's jumped down. It's jumped down. Right, here we go. Uh, do it yourself, lifestyle. You okay, ads? Yep. Um, how many items do you listing a week at the moment? I'm aiming for 100, 150 fresh listings currently. Um, I don't know. I do like 70, 80 listings a week on eBay. That's about it. Um, I've not been listing as much recently as I should be. On Amazon, I've not even like, oh my God, on Amazon, I've not even sent a box in, in like three weeks. I'm really, really slacking with Amazon. But I'm changing my business model with Amazon, so I'm really trying to uh, low quantity, higher value. So, like, in this next shipment, I've got about 30 items going off, but about three or four of those items are £100 plus. So, yeah, I mean, it's better. I feel like doing it that way is better than just, like, sending in a load of 5 to £10 items. Um so I'm lowering my quantity and just increasing that uh, value. But yeah, I have been slacking a bit recently. But yeah, so this is like a little race car. Um, obviously, it's not in the best shape, but it's in it's in slightly better shape than other ones I've seen seen on there actually. Um, some of the paintwork is coming off and stuff like that. Um, but I thought that I, I was intrigued by this because it was this Timpo toys. And I did do some research on it. I couldn't really find many that were like this one, that were, you know, exactly the same. Uh, and I put here Timpo, £10-ish, but I might shoot for 15 quid on that one, actually, uh, and just see where I go with it. But that is quite interesting. But I have put £10-ish there. But when I put ish, when I put £10-ish or £20-ish, I think I'm meaning, like, within the range of 10 to 15. So, yeah. That one was quite nice. It was just interesting to find one in there that was a different brand other than Corgi or Dinky or this or that. So, yeah, that one was quite cool. I've done those. Um, oh, this one was nice. This one's a nice cool one. This is actually in really good condition. Uh, well, I mean, it's not boxed or anything, but it's in good condi un good unboxed condition. And I'll just flip onto the camera. And... Uh, do, do, do. I just flip onto the camera because I don't know whether you're going to see it very well. Um, so it's not going to focus very well because my camera isn't that good. But um, my webcam isn't that good. But this is a Dinky Toys Super Marine Swift. Um, and it says Meccano Limited on there as well, made in England. Now, this is a little bit all over the place on completing cells. This, there was three of these that went. So, you know, three, three of these that went for um, 10 pound plus postage. But then like quite recently, about five or six days ago, there was one of these that sold for 10 pound plus postage. So I think what I'll do, oh, the wheels move as well, that's cool. Um, I thought the wheels might have been locked in position or something, but they move. Um, but I think what I'll do is actually just whack that on for 10 pound plus postage, see where I go. Um, and if I have to reduce it, I have to reduce it. But I thought that was quite cool. Um, and that's something you got to be careful in these big job lots because these are these little things are the things that you overlook. And, you know, you, you've missed out on 10 quid if you just, you know, if you overlook it and then you just chuck all it, chuck it all in a big job lot and auction it off or something. Or you chuck it in, uh, you know, in a, a crap box or something, you know, that you're going to auction off or that you're going to do something else with. So, yeah, you've got to be careful with these little things and don't overlook them. So, yeah, that was pretty cool um right where's my little sheet again so there's this one here so this is the thunderbird one um thunderbird ford no no no, not thunderbird one sorry ford 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 thunderbird if i can even say that that's quite hard to say now this is in better i know you know oh, it's not very good really is it to do all these die casts with but because my camera isn't very good at focusing but um, yeah, this is actually in pretty good condition compared to a lot of the ones that are on. Um, the ones that are on are really quite beat up. Um, I put ten pound on here again. I don't know. I might go. I might go a little bit higher than that. But if I put it on here, then that's got to be somewhere in the region. Now the thing is with this, 
I don't know whether this has got plastic wheels or metal wheels. I think that if it's got metal wheels, it's actually worth more. Um, and I don't know whether this has got plastic wheels or metal wheels. So I've got to look into that a bit more and see. I don't know. I just don't know how to tell, really. I can't. Might be plastic wheels, but I don't know. I can't really tell at the moment. But that's that one, anyway. Only a little tiny thing, but yeah. Some of these little ones can be worth okay money. Um, right, next. This was something that I thought would be worth a lot more than it actually is. It's like going for about five quid plus postage on complete and sold. Um, and it's like a, you know, it's like a metal tonker. Is it that little stamp there says Tonka? I know it's very hard to read on the focus there. Um, but yeah, it's like a metal small Tonka bull uh, bulldozer. And I thought I'd be going for a little bit more than it's going for. I thought maybe like 10, 15 quid. But yeah, only five, five quid plus postage. That's going to be around the the area on that one. It's a, it's a bit annoying because I thought, I was looking at that and I thought, oh yeah, that's that's got to be worth something. You know, with it being metal and it's you know it's a tonka die cast as well you'd think it'd be a bit more than that but i suppose you know name isn't everything all the time and you know some things just aren't worth that much money so yeah i was a little bit disappointed on that one but yeah that's, that, still it's a nice item i like you know i like it for what it is um so that was that one i'm just going to dip into the chat very quickly uh do, do, do. oh we've got pommy pickers in there good day ads yeah uh if i can say it one second good day good day is that it good day good day good day good day yeah is that it i don't know um lisa is it is it chucking it down heavy rain and windy here well it's not where i am just to give you some context it's really not where i am um it's a wet one. No, it's not me. It's not a wet one. Uh, not for me. Uh, wet rubber, it says dinky toys. Uh, I don't know what you're referring to there, but maybe something that I just showed. Um, sunshine in Scarborough, Southwest Cellars. Oh, God, the chat keeps doing. Can people just stop talking in the chat for a minute, please? I can't bloody keep up. Um, are you saying bigger is better, Ad? No, I'm not saying bigger is better. Not in that circumstance. Not in the circumstance I think you're innuendo Lee referring to if that's a word um you're lucky pissing that pissing it down in Devon um it's windy on the Wirral wow okay um just starting to piss in central London oh my god one sec one sec god this chat jumped so quick did you ah yeah great uh, um I talked about this yesterday actually uh doing it yourself lifestyle did you go and see about the cabinet what did we say? When can you move in? Very good question. I didn't even need to ring up or go down there and see. They rang me yesterday. Uh, what did you do yesterday? No, Wednesday. Left a message on the phone to say, uh, we've got a cabinet available. I'm really, really happy about this. We've got a cabinet available um, of, you know, from the 1st of September. So it's less than two weeks. I was wait, you know, that, you know, that's nothing really of a wait considering I've been waiting like three or four months. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be, uh, I'll, I'll hopefully try and do some sort of vlog video on the day I go down to fill it up. Um, I might not be able to film in the actual place. I don't know. Um, but I'll do some sort of vlog video that day and then upload it to the channel. Because as I say, as I said yesterday, I know a lot of people want to want to hear about that, and um, it's it's just a bit different because I, I don't think there are many like uh, resellers in the UK who you know maybe we do have cabinets or booths or stuff, but we don't really show it much on the channel. I know Kirsten does a lot, but I can't really think. Of, I know Tom did for a time. Tommy English Picker, I know he he did show it on a few videos, but. Um, but other than that, you know, there's not been many people actually showing things like that. So I'll try and show a little bit of that side um, and, and that exciting newness um, in videos in the future. Um, just because it's a bit different, isn't it? A bit interesting, other than just eBay all the time or Amazon all the time. Um, right then, yeah, close enough ads. Yeah, oh yeah, that's all right. Yeah, close enough. Um, oh God, the chat's jumping. Uh, nin, 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 nin. yeah so that was that anyway so i'm gonna be moving in very soon really really happy with that um so yeah that's that so i'll, I'll um, move on with some other stuff 
And it did do ah. This one was quite cool. Now this one's not in terrible condition. This one's pretty good. Pretty good condition. It's got now the thing with this one. I've not wrote this one down of how much it's worth, but I think I might be able to get some okay money for this because it's got its trailer. This is one second. Uh, Land Rover 109, uh, and then like the little inches sign or little like uh, apostrophe. Uh, is that is that right? Apostrophe. Uh, and then WB. Anyway, so it's a Corgi Toys Whiz Wheels, and I don't think I've had that much success with the Whiz Wheels. Um, I don't know. I can't remember. I have sold a few, but I don't think I've got great prices for them, to be honest. Um, but I, I found one of these, right? And it only sold for about, I think, four or five quid. But it didn't have this little red thing on the top. And it did seem to have a bit more wear than this one does here. And also, it didn't have the trailer. And I can't seem to find one of these. I can't seem to find many of these on completely sold. And I can't seem to find one with its trailer. So, and I think this is the correct trailer. It's the same colour and stuff. It doesn't actually, it says Corgi Toys on the back, um, but it doesn't say it, it does have a, a, some sort of patent number or something, but patent number or whatever you call it. But I don't know, but I'm just assuming that's, that's his trailer. Oh, I know, it must be. You know, but can you see that 23 on there? Well, it's got a 23 on there as well, so it must be. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking I might shoot shoot for about 15 to 20 on that. I don't know whether I'll actually get that, but I'm going to try that first off at about that price. Um, just because it's got its trailer with it. I will do a bit more research before I list it for that, because sometimes when you're doing this quick little bit of research, you actually maybe don't type in the correct search term, or you know, you, once you have a play about with, uh, with search terms, you might actually find some of these on completely sold. And you might be going for less than you actually originally thought. And if you actually went and listed it for that higher value, not realizing that there's actually a load of other ones on, but you've just not done your research in the correct way, and there's loads of others on for like 10 quid and you list it for 20 quid, then you're just going to sit there and sit there and sit there and sit there and sit there. So, yeah, it does pay to do um, more in-depth research. So, yeah, but um, I think there could be some money in that one. That's quite nice. And it is in fairly decent condition. Obviously, it's play-worn, what would be considered play-worn, but it's not terribly play-worn at all. You know, you get some that are really, really play-worn. Um, so that's that one. Oh, I, something else I don't know the value on of. I thought I'd do this one as well now. Um, where are we here? Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, we've got Kirsten in the chat. Funnily enough, I just mentioned Kirsten, didn't I? Um, we've got, yeah, Kirsten. Hi, Lisa and Gary, she says. Are the die cast going in your cabinet? Yeah, good question again. What I'm going to do is, like, I've got so much volume of them. I've got tons of volume. I might end up putting a few in the cabinet. But the thing I explicitly said, and I don't know whether I said this on video, but I explicitly said about three months ago when I was doing my week on at the, the Antique Centre, don't put die cast in your cabinet because every other bloody bugger has got die cast in the cabinets. And it's like the market's probably saturated anyway. But now I'm probably end up going to put a few die cast in there anyway. And then I'd be like, well, are you ever going to sell that? I don't know. I mean, for all I know, people have a lot of die cast in their cabinets because they sell. But on the other end of the scale, we might just have them in the cabinets and we just sit there and sit there and sit there. So, yeah, I don't know. And you, if I put them in my cabinets, you're not going to get a lot back per piece. You really aren't. I mean, there's a few people in the cabinet who have got, like, matchbox ones and things like that in there. And it's like they're doing them for, like, five for a quid. It's like, what? Why are you doing them for that cheap? But um, there's then other ones. Obviously, there's other sought-after ones that you can put a, a good price tag on. But a lot of the ones I've got, I've got a lot of volume, but I've only got, and there is, like, in, in this box here, these are mainly all the Lesney ones. So they're not, they're not like, Matchbox, or they're not Le Lido or Lado or Yesteryear or anything like that. Um, but, you know, I mean, you're, not, you're just not going to get a ton of money back in the cabinet for them, unless, it, as I say, it's, like, a sought-after one or something. Um, but I don't know. I mean, saying that, I could be surprised. I could put some in there. And I could whack a price on, you know, being completely irrelevant to the other dealers, you know, not even ignorant to the other dealers, 
and just put my price on it and they might go i don't i don't know i've, I've got to test that out when i get the cabinet but um but yeah probably if, if, to answer your question more quickly because i'm just rambling on now um yeah um i think i will put some in my cabinet at some point so yeah so just to test the waters um bought two van loads on monday two van loads from the auction wow that is crazy doing a pop-up vintage shop if you see my facebook page you'll see cool um person's curiosity is just going through your catalog for tuesday's auction oh just going through the catalog so we must live close together um so we'll look forward to your vid with a, with a full kitchen table <laughs> um you not done any auctions lately oh right yeah talking to Kirsten. so yeah there's this metal you know yellow play worn tonka truck thing there i don't know i might get 10 quid for this considering that that other little bulldozer was a lot less than i thought i think that this one might be a lot less than i thought i thought this one might be worth about 20 quid but i don't know i'll have to do some research on this because again this is one that i've not researched unfortunately but yeah i mean probably 10 quid as a minimum i'd hope for that one um yeah we'll see we'll see um right i've got to get me a little thing now because we're back to the ones that i have researched um police car black um this is a police car wolves wolvesley 680 so it's like this and i don't know whether you're gonna see it very well at all um did you ever sell that old fire extinguisher no we were talking about that last, uh, yesterday um in the chat actually um i think we were were we i think we were um i've left it for when i get my cabinet because i didn't want to sell it on ebay for the time being because a few people said it would might be unwise to sell it on ebay in the chat and then I know there, there is people who've sold them on eBay and stuff, but I, I don't know. I was just a little bit like that. When people said about the chemical in it and stuff like that, post in it, yeah, it just uh, it got me a bit nervous about doing that. So I've not sold it on eBay. Um, I am going to ask at the uh, where, I'm got, where I've got my cabinet or where I get my cabinet, I'm going to ask them... Um, can i sell it you know i'm going to blatantly tell them what what it is uh you know what could be in it because there's a chance that there could just be salt water in it but there's a chance that there could actually be this chemical i think it's tetrachloride or something uh which is is quite harmful or very harmful actually um and obviously if i tell them what it is they say no you can't sell it and that's fair enough if they say yes i can sell it fingers crossed they do say that then i will put it in my cabinet but as i talked about yesterday there is a risk that you know a customer picks it up they drop it you know they're then exposed to it and other people in the antique center at the time are so it's where i stand on that you know i mean my public liability or whatever you know that's what i'm trying to say so it's a very hard one it's like I'm thinking like I'm glad I picked it up, but now is there actually any nice way of going about selling it? You know, I mean, but there is one way. There is one way I thought is in a fine antique, fine art or antique sale at my local auction house. I could do that. I'd probably get about. I imagine the estimate would be fifty to eighty would put on it, and maybe maybe it'd go to a hundred. So I'd get my money out of it, and then I'd get a little bit of profit at the end of it, but. I don't know yeah yeah but it's one of those things that i've been a little bit um cautious about even keeping in my house you know someone said that yesterday i think it was retro boot disc and at the start i was actually really um i didn't want you know i didn't want it in my house i really didn't i didn't like the fact that it was in the house but um yeah it is still in the house and it just sat there and it's fine it's in a fairly safe area so it's not going to fall off at anything at any time um so yeah i mean i'm fairly comfortable with that now but yeah, it, it's just one of them things isn't it bag it and bin it oh no i'm not doing that you can't you can't bin something that's antique that's you know like 1860s or 1880s or whatever it is and it's a fight hand fire extinguisher that's made of glass and that has survived all that time and then you just bin it it's like no you can't do that no um can't you empty it and sell it well i can't empty it because if i have 
any sort of exposure to that, it, it can be really, you know, it's not just a chemical that, you know, is used in a, a, that could be used in a science lab at school or something, you know, and you could, you could have a bit of exposure to it. It's something that you can't really have any exposure to. So unless you were to get one of them like hazmat suits or something and then empty it, but I don't know. But then is it actually worth as much? Because maybe it's worth as much as it is because the contents are sealed, you know, because it's not been broken because it's not been thrown. Um, I don't know. I, anyway, it's one of them that I've got to really think about. Anyway, this one goes for between five and ten quid. So, I mean, it's only a tiny little die cast, but yeah, five and ten quid on that. Obviously, it's play warm, but that's what I've seen others go for that are also in play warm condition. So, yeah, pretty cool that one. Um, I'll just quickly go through these other ones. Uh, what was this one? I don't think I wrote this one down. Rolls Royce Silver Cloud. I didn't write that down, but I did research it earlier on. And I think there was one on for about seven quid. And then there was others that are sold for anywhere between sort of three pounds. And I think the other, I think one of the maximums was about nine or ten pounds. So I might pitch that high at maybe seven quid, eight quid, something like that, and see where I go with that one. But that's in really good condition as well. It's got a bit of something on there, a bit of black mark or something. I know you can't see these very well, so I do apologise. Um, but it's got some sort of black marking on the top there that I might be able to get off. Um, but, I mean, to just such little die cash, you know, but even five or ten quid is all right because I can blast through these. Like, I always say, you know, I don't like doing things that are below a tenner now, but I kind of lie to myself a little bit because if it's things like die cash or if it's things like uh, little things that I can get through really quick and that I know if I could price them competitively, they'll go quite quick as well. Um then I don't mind blasting through, you know, 30, 40 listings in a day or so and, and just getting them out because it's so easy to photograph, so easy to to list them. And as long as I'm not doing doing ones for like 2 99 free postage, it's kind of okay. As long as I'm doing mainly over a five and also mainly over a ten of them, I'm, I'm fairly happy. Um, but yeah, so that one, hopefully about seven quid on that one. Uh, there was this one, which is interesting. Now, I think it's meant to have a tire on the front there, but it's not got that on, actually. And it's a Dinky Toys um, 109 WB Land Rover, similar to the one that I showed you over there. But this one is Corgi. This one's Corgi, this blue one here. Um, so, yeah, what was this one? Did I write this down? Land Rover, 10 to 15 on that one. So that was okay. That's pretty cool. Now, bear in mind... This is a very, very small portion of the die cast that I'm showing you. And I probably got my money back in the stuff that I'm showing you here, which is pretty cool. Um, and then everything else is profit on top. Um, and then obviously the pictures are separate. They're a separate, you know, price altogether. Um, but yeah, so that's that one. That's pretty cool. I did see that in like mint condition, these go for good money, pretty good money indeed, actually. Um, and um, I would have loved this to be in like mint condition and stuff, but yeah. Ah, well, that's okay. Um, right, well, oh, this was cool. This was cool, although it, it's pretty badly worn. Um, it's got it's got things missing off it and stuff like that. But it's a Thunderbird 2, and I'll put this down here. Uh, this thing does come out of here. I always forget how you do it. I think you push those two in. You push those two in. Yes, there we go. Right. So then this comes, so then that's like the, the body of Thunderbird 2, and then that's the little storage container. This actually has in, if I can get this open, this actually has in, where is it? It's in there. It's in there. This has in the little Thunderbird 4. Now, this can actually be often, often be lost, so I'm glad I actually, I'm really glad I actually got one with this Thunderbird 4 in. I'm, I'm actually really happy that. Um, I managed to find one, you know, with that in because I have had one of these before, but it didn't have it in. And I was really gutted because I thought, oh, I'd love, love that, love that to have that in. Um, I think I'm looking at well, a quick bit of research. I know it's in poor condition, but I'm hoping for about 15 to 20 quid on this one, especially with it having the Thunderbird, um, the Thunderbird 4 in as well in the cargo bay. Um, now, I don't know how to get this back in. 
Do I push it? Oh, I'll push it up the other side, I think. Do I push it up the other side? Yes, I do. Right, there we go. Yeah, cool. But unfortunately, I don't know. Is that broken off there? I think they're broken off there, those two little things. And then these two are actually okay if I can get this one out. I don't know whether that's stuck in there or not. But anyway, I'll see on that one. But it's it's a cool item. I've had one before. But as I say, I don't think... I think it might have been a slightly different version. Because I don't remember the one I had having these red things here. Um, so, yeah, I don't know whether it was a different version or what. Um, oh, this one was pretty cool. I don't know what I've got on this one. Tank Transporter. £10-ish. Now... I don't know how realistic that is actually because this one is pretty worn. Um, so this is a, is it a Thornton or something? For, oh, Thornley Croft. Um, and then it's a tank, tra a Sankey 50, Sankey 50 ton tank transporter. Pretty cool item. Um, and yeah, hopefully about 10 quid on that. Might have to go a little bit less though because it is, just seems very very play warm this one so i don't know um oh wait we've got a load of uh, chat in the chat one sec i'm gonna let the cat in there we go um right where are we hi hi ads bit late but glad glad to make it it's uh oh, to one of your live streams oh hitman uk oh so are you are you fairly new to the the live stream is this your first time to being in one of my live streams um so I'm having a bit of lunch and watching the listing to add. Everyone seems to list to me. I didn't think, I didn't think people actually list um, while they're watching me. Wasn't Thunderbird too green? My yes, it was green. Yes, and when I was doing some research on completing swords, there was a green version and there was a blue version. So I don't know. It is still green. I mean, like the new Thunderbird se uh, series, it, it is still green in that. So I don't know. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe we just maybe we made a green and a blue version. It's weird, isn't it? I don't know. Um, I'm on 22 at the moment, got another 50 60 photograph ready to rock and roll. Wow, 22 listings today! Wow, that's awesome. Uh, Luke is in the chat. Good afternoon, Ad. Hi there. Uh, did you do uh, where should be the chat? What oh, it's for the chat. Is that what's the best item you've ever bought but can't sell on eBay? Mine is Rolling Stones, Leatherman, Knife, Multi-Tool. Only a few made for the tour crew slash roadies. Still have it for you. Like, well, yeah, kind of mine would be the bomb, wouldn't it? Um, right. We're near the bottom of the chat now. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, wow. It's a bit, uh, oh, right, it's okay. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Just random chatting there now. Um, right. We've got this Corgi Jaguar XJ 112C. Did I put this in here? Police car, yeah. Police car, 10 quid. Again, these are all like 10 quid. It's like 10 quid is the, is the price. But then there's this thing on here, and it's a bit it's a bit worn, the ant antennae on there. But, I mean, it's play-worn. It's considerably play-worn. But I put 10 quid, so I must think, I must think that I could get 10 quid. Going off completing solves. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh got any red line matchbox in that lot ads. Red line matchbox. I don't know what red line are. Is that like a um a specific series that matchbox did or something? I don't know. I mean, as I say, I've not I've not gone through half of it. I've not even looked at the matchbox ones yet because I wanted to pick out the dinky and the corgi and the the, uh, some of the better Lesney ones and stuff like that. Um, ten pound for each one. Ten pound is that for the red line ones or what? Um, Ads back in '93, Dinky reissued and recolored Thunderbird two and was changed from green to blue. It was available right up until Dinky Toys went out of business in 1980. Oh, right, cool. Red line is that the cards with red wheels or oh, maybe? I might have. There's, there's tons. There's tons of stuff. There's more in the other room, but yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, these were cool. Now, these were really interesting. So these two are like the old sort of cars. I don't know what what are they called. They're like um, you know we had like Model Ts and Model As and all that sort of stuff. 
I think these are one of them, like or, or some sort of model anyway. Um, and I think these are quite old. I don't think they're mega, mega old, but I do think they're quite old because they're actually hollow inside. They are made by Dinky, uh, and these would, I think these would go quite nicely as a pair, actually. So I might sell them as a pair. Um, but they are hollow, and the, you can only just make out Dinky, and they're made in England. So, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what I'm looking at value on these, but I thought they were really cool, and I do think they do have some age to them. But they are, the wheels, I believe, are plastic. So if the wheels are plastic, then they can't be mega, mega old, can we? Because surely plastic was after Bakelite, so... If Bakelite was like 30s and 40s, surely plastic would have come around in the 50s. So I don't know, because we can't be mega, mega old if, it, if these wheels are plastic, but we'll see. Oh, there she goes. She got, get, gets up on me. She loves it. She loves bunging getting up on me. It's like a parrot. Um, but yeah, so, whoa. So yeah, those are them. Anyway, so I thought they were really cool because just because they were hollow, and I thought, oh, that's different. That's interesting. Um, Old ones are very collectible. Um, of course, the old ones are very... Yeah, of course, the old ones are very collectible. All right, okay. Um, clips self around the head. I don't... You like being on camera, don't you? You like being on camera. I don't... It's weird every time I'm, I'm in here talking to myself. It's like she knows I'm talking to the camera and then she wants to come in and get on camera with me. Um, so that's those... One sec, watch out, Electra. Um, oh, these were cool. Now, these are these are two uh, Lesney. I think that's how you pronounce it, Lesney. I, I'm probably looking like a fool pronouncing it the com completely wrong way, but I think it, it is Lesney. Um, oh, you're going down the arm. Um, and these go, well, I've seen one go for about seven quid. So if I can get about seven quid each, and there's 14 quid there. But I'm thinking I might just do the two. I don't know how saleable two as a lot would be. Um, I mean, oh, there you go. She's she's jumped down. She's getting very good at jumping. You know, she get she's jumping higher places and stuff now. Um, I don't know how saleable two as a lot would be, but if I do the two as a lot, I don't know, 13 quid, 15 quid maybe if I can push 15. Um, so, yeah, but there's those two. I, mean, I just thought they were quite interesting, quite cool. Um, but as you can tell, again, play one. The ones I did see were a little bit play worn, although I think that these might be slightly more play worn than the ones I saw. I don't know, but yeah, they, they were pretty cool. Um, so that was those. I got this. This is random. This is weird. Um, it is, let me just see here a castle art product, Birmingham, England. And it actually requires a key, and I've not got the key. The keyhole is there. I've not got the key, so I don't know. I don't know whether I could sell that, you know, just sell it and save it. I've not got the key, but it would make a, a, a display piece or something. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, there's probably some money in that. I don't think I saw anything on Completing Souls. I did do some research, I think it was yesterday when I got this stuff. Um, but I couldn't find anything when I was running a few quick searches. So, yeah, I don't know, but I thought I'd show you that because it's interesting. Um, and then there's this one. What did I put for this one? Where's my thing? Did I actually put anything down for this? No, I didn't put anything down for this. I mustn't have. I think I think I was looking at about sort of six to ten quid on that one, if I remember rightly. And it's uh, it's not in too bad condition. There's some that I've seen that have gone in worse condition for this, and they've sold. Um, and this is a, a carrier refuse refuse collector by lesney um and it's got the little stickers on and the stickers are actually uh quite good for the for the age a lot of the stickers and stuff and this sort of uh you know the stamping or whatever you want to call it on there um a lot of them can actually come off and you can't even see the writing so it's quite nice that they're you know they're in good condition so that was that one anyway um I haven't wrote that down, with, you know, the value, but I think if I remember rightly, it was about sort of the six to ten quid, five to ten quid, that sort of range. Um, right, then, I think there's only a couple more that I was going to show you now. Um, oh, it was this Bugs Bunny. Um, oh, God. Get off there. 
Um, bug. This is a Bugs Bunny. Now, it isn't. It isn't really worth anything, and it's definitely not worth anything with that there, with that little thing there. Um, so it, it's called a Bugs Bunny buggy, and as you can see there, the wheels off, like I just showed you. And to be honest, it's worth about three pound plus postage or something like that. But I just thought I wanted to show you because it's cool. It's a little, it's got a little Bugs Bunny in it. I don't think you're going to be able to see it very well, unfortunately, with my camera. But, you know, you can kind of see it there. The bug, oh, it's so bad, my camera. If I block my face out, do you think, do you think it would actually focus in on it? I don't know. It's not focusing in on it, is it? I don't know. Anyway, um, but it's a little Bugs Bunny thing. I thought it was cool. I probably won't be able to sell it really, in, you know, individually because... It's got that wheel missing and, you know, it, it just there's no point. So I'll job lot up or something in a little job lot or something and get it out that way. But I just thought it was cool, so I wanted to show you. Um, so, yeah, I think the magazines will hopefully return about 40 quid. I think all that there that I've just showed you must be must be 100 or so quid in that. So hopefully, um, give or take a little bit, you know, for fees and stuff and, Maybe a, maybe a few more die cast will, will get me to my money back. And then the rest of it's profit. What I'm yet to go through, the, the four, well, four, five, six boxes that I'm yet to go through, um, and all the matchbox ones and stuff. Some of the matchbox ones I've bundled up. There's some, uh, there's actually some like Super Kings ones, you know, like um, some of the lorries and stuff like that that might do okay individually on their own. Um, there's actually some. Uh, Britain's farmyard figures in there as well. I think if I lock those up in a little job lot, there's not many of them, but I think if I lock those up in a little job lot, I might be able to get 10 quid, something like that. I don't know. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, and then it's just going through all the other, all the other die casts and stuff and locking them up accordingly. And then what I'll do at the end of it is um, do like a real trash box and then just auction that off and do some do some photos, you know, so then people understand what they're getting and that, it, you know, m most of the stuff in the box is just not great at all. Um, and obviously highlight that in the description and photos and stuff. Um, and then just auction that off and then whatever that gets, that gets. So, yeah. And then maybe some will go for a couple of quid in the cabinet or a quid in the cabinet. Um so, yeah, I mean, I'm yet to go through and sort all of them. There's probably some more £10, well, it's probably bound to be a few more £10, £20 items in there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think I did, you know, because of doing this auction where it's a little bit more higher value and obviously we've got online as well and stuff like that, I do think I do pay a little bit more for things. And this, it does take a, it does put a bit of a squeeze on your profit margins, but it's not terrible. I still get some good money back from this. But the thing I'm, I always compare that auction house to the one, one in Warrington, and I can get like a big job lot of stuff, like five or ten quid from Warrington, and loads of money in it. Whereas at this other one, you pay up. Yes, there is some better quality stuff in it, but I just don't know, how, you know whether paying up for it is worth the quality that I'm getting back, if you understand what I mean. So I don't know. That's why I like Warrington Auction better because it's got that, it's got like five, you know, five pound lots, big, big, massive job lots, take it away for seven quid or whatever, you know, it, it, it's better. That. I mean, I, I really want to find an auction house that like starts having a quid and then you get like five boxes worth of stuff for like three or four quid. But yeah, I don't know. I might, I might have to go a bit further afield to find one of them. Um, right, I think we've got one second. Question, how much are you, well, that, there we go. How much are you expecting back on the whole lot? Really, I'd want about four to 450 sales value um, because then that'd be like three times my money. Whether I quite get to the 450, I don't know. Um you know, I'm, I'm definitely clearing 300 with this, so I can see that. Whether I get to the 450, I'm not sure, but I, I really feel like I need, you know, if I spent 150 on a lot, I need to be at 400, really, at least, because double your money isn't quite good enough for me personally. I like to be 
just over double my money. Like if I invested a, uh, a grand in something, I don't want to just come out with 2K gross. I want to come out with at least 2.5K gross, if not 3K. I know it doesn't always work like that with your higher value figures. You know, the higher value you go, uh, often the small, well, the sort of the, the smaller the, the profit percentages. Um, whereas the lower value you go, the higher the, the profit percentages. And I am trying to stress percentage, not profit in terms of uh, value, but pro well, not profit in terms of a monetary value, but profit expressed as a percentage. As you get into buying, spending more to make more, it's generally the profit percentage goes down slightly, actually. So, um, yeah, but I'd like 4 four fifty really. So I'll have to total it all up and, and have a check. But I imagine in what I've just showed you there is probably 150 or maybe even a little bit more. So, yeah, and then I've got all the other boxes to go. So, yeah, I'm fairly happy with it. Um and then I've got all these in here that I haven't even bothered. Like, I've got all those Lesney ones in there that I haven't even bothered with searching and stuff. Um, and there, there's some buses and stuff in there. Is that a Lesney one? Yeah. There's some buses and stuff in there. And what I might do with some of the buses, if it if it's viable or if, it's, um, if it helps saleability or whatever, or if it doesn't harm saleability, I might actually bundle some of the buses up and do a few little bundles and things like that, maybe get a bit more out of them, rather than like listing every single one individually, that would just be a no-no for me. Um, but I don't mind listing a certain portion of them individually. There we go, I've got another bus there. So I don't know, you know, I don't know. Um, I'll have to go through, bundle things up, do me little bundles, all that sort of stuff. Will you do 30 days by it now or auctions? Uh, good question, actually. There might be a few that I'm tempted to do auctions on, but hmm, I mean, I will obviously, as I just mentioned, I will auction off the, um, you know, I'll auction off like the job lots, you know, the real, uh, you know, things that I just don't want to deal with. But for the other ones that sell individually, probably a good portion of them, like, you know, a really good percentage of them, like 90%, 80%, 90%, I'll be buying it now. Unless I see on completing the souls that auctions are doing quite well for that individual die cast. And then I might think, oh, well, I'll just shove it on auction. Um, question, how many listings are you currently at now on eBay? I'm trying to build my store up uh, with as much inventory as I can, ready for a business time ahead. Um, I'm on about 1,012 or something, 1,015. It's gone down a bit because I did a load of auctions the other week. And obviously they all finished and I've not been listing as much. So it kind of all those auctions finished about 20 auctions or so finished. And then I've not been listing that much and I've been getting buy it now sales. So it's gone down a little bit. I think it was at about uh, 1,030, 1,040. But yeah, it's gone down a little bit from then. Um, how do you think it will take? How do you think it will take to sell these items ads? Well, oh, how long? Um it really depends on a lot of factors like pricing, uh, demand for like the certain diet. Like some of them there might be in good demand. Like I imagine the, the Thunderbirds one is going to be a bit more demand for it. So that might go quickly. Um, maybe the pumps, maybe the pumps, they might go a bit quicker. Um, I imagine things like, what am I going to, um, maybe those, maybe those might go a bit quick. Um, but then things like these ones, these ones might be a bit slow, but it really, I'm, I'm just guessing, it really depends on on how fast, you know, the sales velocity of these things in completing solves. Um, some will have a lower self rule, others will have a higher. So, and, and there might be some that surprise you, but you're listing straight away. And although you've listed them at a decent price, you know, you've not undersold them. They end up going within a day or two anyway. You know, you're not necessarily undersold them, but they just randomly seem to go fast. So yeah, um, you're a listing machine. I don't know. I'm not a listing machine. I wouldn't say that. Um, well, that's a heap of listings. Yeah, that's kind of what I was tempted with. Uh, I've not seen your name in the chat there, Derek. Derek Suter. Oh, I think I, I actually I, I remember that name, Derek Suter from something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I don't know whether you're new in the chat or not. Um, 
Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a heap of listings. Um, that, as I was just about to say, I, that's what tempted me to like really bid on a lot of the diecast because I was I, I wanted like I was getting like I don't know, not stressy, but I just wanted. I like to have a lot of stock. I like to have a lot of stock, so I always buy a lot of stock. Um, so then I don't have that fear of not getting stock. So. Whenever I go to an auction or something, I always look, look for big job lots. So then I think, well, that'll feed me for a while, you know. Um, I always think of myself as, I always think of my reselling as me being hungry, you know. And, you know, if I eat a fair bit, then I'm not going to be hungry for a while. Um, and if I, you know, buy a whole lot, I'm not going to be hungry in terms of needing more stock for a while. So that's kind of how I look at it. Um Thunderbirds have just got a little boost as they have got a new ad on the TV. I think it's for a bank or something. I can't remember. Yeah, they did have a new show as well that started the other year. Um, but obviously, any boost from that will have gone by now. Um, what is she doing there? Um, oh, I also got a random like remote control car in there. I don't know what that is, but yeah. Um, She's chewing on the wire as well. Um, I never make it live. That's what it is. Oh, I, maybe I've seen you, um, seen your name in the the groups or something. I don't know Facebook groups. And I just remember, I remember your name. Um, so yeah, that's all the questions in there. I'll leave it there, guys, because we've probably been over an hour. So yeah, I'm sorry that the uh, you couldn't really see them very well on my camera. I didn't even think about that to tell you the truth. Um, I just thought they'd, they'd show up quite well, but I know they were very blurred, weren't they? So I'm sorry about that, but I did try and, you know, read the names out and stuff so you kind of knew what we were. Um, and always, you can always, like, do your own research on completing solves to see, you know, see what we look like and see what we're getting. Don't just take my word for it, you know, and go on completing solves. Um, what's the plans this afternoon and week? I'll just quickly answer this. Um, well, in terms of week, it's over now, really. Well, I mean, you've got Saturday and Sunday. Um, Saturday tomorrow, I'm going to, to, in, to uh, into town, if I can even speak. Go around the charity shop to get some more boxes, that sort of stuff. And then Sunday, I'm going to a uh, car boot. That I, these kind of car boots I love. I'm going to a pub car boot. So any school or any pub car boots, I absolutely love. Yes, you don't get the volume of people. Um, but I just love how nice and quiet it is and... You can go round, and yes, you might not get a lot of stuff, but it's nice just to go round, and it, it, it's just nice and quiet and stuff. And also, you don't quite have to get up as early. I think I'm uh, getting up about half seven, seven, half seven uh, on Sunday, because it, it opens at about, I think it says it opens at eight, but I'd probably get up at seven and get down there for half seven. But I can't imagine. Now, normally, if somewhere opened at eight or opened at seven or opened at six or whatever, I'd get there an hour early. But just because of the whole vibe I'm getting from this car boot, I can't see there being a lot of competition there. So I'm just going to get there half an hour early and see what's what. But yeah. Um, and then next week, and I hope you're all excited because next weekend is, I believe, a bank holiday, the 20. Uh, weekend of the 26th something like that it's a bank holiday weekend so you've got some people in their area will have saturday car boots now i don't really have saturday car boots in this area but um i do have a car boot on the sunday and the monday so i mean i know a lot of you will actually have a saturday car boot sunday car boot and a monday car boot so very exciting next weekend for, for getting stock and things like that and don't forget you know it's starting to uh, the car boot season is starting ever so slowly to draw to a close now. You know, it's it's going to be September and then it'll be October and then it'll be your indoor car boots and stuff like that. Um, and it might not be as good. So it's, you know, this this is like, I always think of uh, the, the end of August bank holiday is like kind of the last hurrah of the outdoor car boots. And then by the end of September, it's starting to, you know, it's starting to wheedle off a bit then. Yeah, I mean, I do have a couple of car boots, outdoor car boots in October. Uh, you know, there is still things going then, but if it, if the weather's not great, you know, it's, you know, people just don't come out. So yeah, um, we have three car boots next week. One, uh, one on Monday. Yeah, it, it's crazy, isn't it? When you get to a bank holiday, um, we have Wednesday car boot. You see, this is the 
we oh my god you're so lucky you have uh so you, you you're basically telling me you've got a saturday car boot you've got a sunday car boot you've got a monday car boot and you've got a uh wednesday car boot oh my god that's crazy you got so many car boots we i have barely ever get to the car boots now yeah well it, you don't have to do you i mean you, you do loads with auctions don't you curse them so it doesn't matter as long as you're getting enough stock that's the thing like you know i always think on the groups and stuff um there's a lot of pressure for you to go to the car boots and then get back and then feel under pressure to to like show how amazing your haul is and you know it's not all about car boots to cut you know car boots are a part of reselling but you've got to realize that you've got to draw your own path to reselling and source in the ways that you want to source like you know car boots i love car boots and i love going to them but to tell you the truth i don't want to get up every week at six o'clock i'm just lazy like that so that's why not every week you see a car boot haul for me but then again i'm still getting enough stock because I'm going to auctions or I'm going, I'm doing sniping because I prefer, I prefer it at three o'clock in the afternoon with a cup of tea to be sat on eBay sniping. That's what I like. I mean, I love car boots and I love auctions, but sniping always has a bit of a, 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 a warm place in my heart because it's, it's something that's very easy for me personally, because I know my searches. I know what I need to be getting. I know what pitfalls there are. I know, you know, I've, I've had the the scams and the bad experiences. So I kind of, and uh, you know, I'm a little bit more well tuned at that now. And and I really enjoy it. You know, I really, really enjoy sniping. And it's because it's nice because it's in my own home. But yeah, I mean, it's just one of them things. Source the way you want to source. You don't have to always go to car boots just because everyone else is going to car boots um but certainly they are a great a great method of sourcing you know i'm not denying that so um so yeah uh tuesday wednesday thursday saturday and sunday i'm like what tuesday wednesday thursday saturday and sunday and bank holidays what's that is that i don't even know what that's on about um it's the best time to sell when the car boots are starting to dry up people are desperate to buy you maybe so i don't know i've never tried it um, there is nothing in the week by me, but I know 50 charity shops to hit, but it takes so much time. Oh, no, it doesn't take that much time. I hit 50 charity shops in one day. You can do it. You can do it. You, no excuses. Come on. What a deal. It's like if I didn't have, if I couldn't get stock, although I don't go to a car boot every week, if I really couldn't get stock, I'd be at that car boot. I'd be at three car boots every weekend until I was back up to getting enough stock. Cause that's kind of have to how you have to be in business you know if things do dry up then you have to get going uh you know like the tough get go uh, what's the word when we're going gets tough the tough get going you know um so i remember i always remember that quote because my old high school teacher um said that quote at his leavers assembly um because he was leaving the school so i always remember that quote but then I realized that a few years later, hang on, that's the Billy Ocean song. I was really inspired by that because I thought that was his quote. I thought, oh my God, that is an awesome quote. Then I actually found the Billy Ocean song, you know, going get the it is Billy Ocean, isn't it? Um, going gets tough. And then I was like, oh my God, I just whipped that off. But anyway, yeah. Um, there's no shortage of stock if you just look eBay. Amazon, Hot UK Deals, Tesco, Asda, House Clearance, Asking Friends. Exactly. It's so, 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 so um, crazy how much you can get. Thing is, you can get time for everything and auctions are the best. You can spend so much uh, on good stock so fast you run out of money because, uh, before time. Yeah, you will. Um, around the South East and Essex and London, you can go to car boot most days of the week if you are willing to drive, but sometimes it's just not worth it. Time is better spent sourcing in other ways. Wow, a car boot almost every day. Billy Ocean was your teacher at school. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I said, oh, no, anyway, I'm not. You know what I said. You know what I said. Ads, are you happy with your stock held back for quarter four, or do you have a lot more purchasing still to do? Um. Thing is, right, sometimes I can get, I know, I know this doesn't, 
I know this isn't what you're meaning, but I'm going to tell you this anyway. Sometimes I can get a bit down when I get something from a car boot or get something from an auction or get something from here or there. And um, I think, oh, there's not as much profit in it, right? And I get a bit down. But when I look at my fourth quarter stock, I don't get down because I know all that stuff is good quality stuff. And I know that isn't what you mean by that question, but I'll answer your question properly in a minute. Um, but I, I, you know, I love my fourth quarter stock. I think there's some great items in there. I think there's some um, fantastic sellers. I think it's going to be that's going to really help me uh, achieve a good target in quarter four. Um, but in terms of actually answering your question properly in the way you, uh, you know, in the way you said it, I am not happy in terms of the quantity I've got. I've got a good quantity. I've got probably more than a lot of people, unless it's people who are into RA or OA, are probably way behind on those guys. But I probably got um, a fair bit more than a lot of people, but I'm still not happy. You know why I'm not happy? Because I want to do a really, really good number in December. And how the hell am I going to hit a really, really, really good number in December if I don't have enough stock, there's no, you can't do it. So I am getting a bit panicky. I'm thinking, oh my God, where am I going to get this stuff from? And then I go on eBay and I think, oh, right. Yeah, it's all there. There's loads of stuff to snipe. And then when I, when the stuff comes through the door, all my sniping purchases, I'm thinking, hang on a minute. This is not nearly enough. It's not nearly enough. And then I get stressy again. And then I do a bit more sniping. And then I might have an off day when I'm sniping. I might think, oh, God, there's no stock around. It's, it's terrible. It's terrible. Like I can't get any stock from eBay now. Where am I going to get all my Christmas stock from? And then I go back into the room and I think, I look at my box and I think, oh, well, I've got a few boxes, but it's not great. And I'm constantly having that battle with myself of saying, look, you've got a good amount of Christmas stock. You will get more Christmas stock in time. But you have to give it a bit more time and put a bit more effort in to get more of that stock. So then come Christmas, you've got enough. But it's constant battle with yourself thinking like, oh, my God, I'm not going to do it in time. I'm not going to have enough. But to be honest, I know that if I put the work in, I will get enough. I'll be more than happy with the amount I have. Um, but I just have to stay focused and not let the bad days, you know, like the days where, you don't feel like you're sourcing that much on eBay because sometimes with sniping, it can be up and down. Um, and some days if I'm not got, you know, I'm not having a good day, it's hard to then think, well, oh God, you know, I, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to not go into that downward spiral of like, oh my God, I need more stock. Um, I always think like that question. Do you think you have got the, uh, got to comfortable, got to a comfortable level? Is that, uh, do you think you've got to a comfortable level at your 1K listings currently? I want to see ads on 5K, 10K listings doing 10K a month. So no, 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 no. That's not my plan at all. You obviously don't know anything about my business plan. No, um, my business plan is to do 10K a month turnover, but with less listings that I've got now. I don't want 5K listings. No way. I'd rather have about five to 600 listings doing like a good turnover each each month. And I want the same with Amazon. I actually want about four five yeah, about four to five hundred listings at Amazon. So actually less at Amazon. Um, but doing, you know, a good turnover on there. And um, I don't want to build more and more inventory. I've got you know what? I've just done my removals from Amazon because they had all that cock up. And I, I said I was going to talk about it today actually, but um, I won't go into it much because we've been so long now and I'm, I'm just rambling. But um, basically, I've, I've redone my returns, um, uh, my remo sorry, my removals or returns or whatever you want to call it. And I have got so much stuff coming back. Now, bear in mind, all that stuff is accounted for. All that stuff is paid for. All that stuff is in my accounts from way back when. So now I've just got to get all my money out of it and get some profit on it as well. Uh, from selling it off on eBay, I do not know where the hell I am going to source uh, store this stuff. Um, I don't know how many boxes it's going to be coming back in. It could come back in about, I mean, you, you know, with Amazon, here's the thing, with Amazon returns, they don't always put like 
enough. We don't always fill the boxes up, do we? So I could have bloody 100 boxes coming back, you know, if they've only put a few, like one item or two items in each box. So where the hell am I going to store this stuff? And then I've got, a, and then if it's on like a Wednesday or a Thursday and there's like piles of boxes that come, where the hell am I going to put the cardboard? Where the hell am I going to put all the items before my dad comes back and then starts moaning at me because I've got, what, what's all this stuff you've got coming back here? So, yeah, oh, my God, it's so, so I, I just, I'm in that place now where I've got so much stuff, I don't need any more stuff. I just need to look and see my vision clearly so that then I know where I'm going and where I want to go is less stuff, more value, same or more turnover. That's it, anyway. Um, I had 40 things returned in 25 boxes. You see, this is going to be terrible. I've got about 200 items coming back. Um, so uh, how many boxes is that? Come on, how many boxes? It's going to be about three pallets on the bloody drive. Where the hell am I going to put the pallets? Oh, God. It's terrible. Um, I just had all my stuff returned. Amazon drove me crazy with the amount of boxes they sent to me. Expect 150 boxes. Oh, great. Where the hell am I going to put this? Where am I Where am I going to put all the cardboard? I was clicking that button today for the uh, return my items or whatever, or, you know, like removal order. Um, and I was thinking, oh, my God, what is going to happen? What am I going to get back, you know? I actually really hope um, that it comes back over a period of about two or three weeks. But I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, we'll all be in the space for a few few days. But, oh, God. Um, no need to go to town for boxes tomorrow. I know, exactly, yeah. Anyway, I'll leave it there, guys. I've moaned and granted and stuff for so long. So I'll leave it there. Thank you all for watching. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, what was I going to say? Oh, comedy short or the uh taster to the world of my comedy is gonna be out on monday i've just finished the fun oh sale oh my god that is so weird look at oh my god i don't think you're gonna see this but look at this or oh, I, I want you to see this please say it'll show up i don't think that's gonna show up it's not gonna show up is it it's not showing up. right that is there um, I'll, I'll read it out to you. £7.98, Matchbox models, models of yesteryear, 1912, Ford Model T. Oh, my God. That, that is crazy. That is crazy. I've literally got a, got a sale for a die-cast toy while I'm on the air. That is weird. While I'm talking about die-cast, that is weird. Um, we all got it all back individually, crazy. Oh, my God. Oh, what? You all got it back individually? That's crap. Oh, great. Right. I'll leave it there. I know it, it, that was weird. That is weird that that sale just happened then. Um, so, yeah, I'll be back on Monday with my comedy short thing. It's kind of a trailer, teaser, taster into the world of my comedy. So, yeah, it's that. And then we're also recording another one either tomorrow or Sunday. So that one will probably be held back for about a month. So unfortunately, you're going to have a bit of a wait for that one. But I'm lacking on ideas with the comedy shorts. So I'm trying to catch up with myself on the ideas front before I publish the, you know, the last one I've done. So that then, you know, I've still got, I've got more ideas so then I can do another one. So, yeah. Anyway, um, right. I will... Um, yeah, I will see you very soon. Oh, and also, it's only a very, very short comedy short. It's only like three minutes because it's meant to be a trailer. So it is only a very short one. But the next one I'm doing recording on Saturday or Sunday this week is a longer one. So it'll be a bit longer anyway. So, yeah. See you guys. Thank you for watching. Bye.